Okay, so so we're gonna go ahead and get started. So if I could have the volunteer from the education group uh, come up here, the person who's gonna just give us the one, two quick things that to take away from the group, education. We had a great group uh, and uh, talked about a number of issues: uh, the information issue, the need for training for uh, volunteers was an issue. But where, what we decided to do was to uh, organize an email exchange where uh, once school starts and information becomes available, we'll exchange that. And then as people have ideas, they're going to continue to chime in on that, on that discussion. So that's where we're headed. And uh, we look forward to the meeting in three weeks. And by that time, we'll have most of the solutions to all the problems. And if other folks want to plug in with that group, is there a contact person, a point person for the education group? You'll be the person. So please get in touch with him um, and share contact information if someone from another group wants to get involved. Um, so then the advocacy group, the larger one, do we have someone who's going to come up and represent that group? Hi, I'm Jorge Montiel, and I. Uh try to facilitate the, the big group. Uh, we, we, we had a lot of ideas and we got to the what, not so much to the how. Uh, so that's the work that we have uh, in front of us. Uh, number one, meet with our elected officials, primarily our congressmen, especially since they are, are in recess. Uh, that's one, one important step. We talked about doing advocacy to the greater community and we broke that up in, in two levels. One, the face-to-face -face kind of advocacy with community groups, primarily through our churches, because we're already connected that way, to bring the message that we've been learning here to them. Um, and, and, and that includes other, any other community groups that we may be part of. And then finally, the, the second part of that advocacy is the more of the public, more of the media approach to it, uh, more of the public displays of welcoming, somebody called it. Uh, whether that be a rally, whether that is going to city council and asking them to pass a resolution, etc. So, meeting with elected officials, number two, having face-to-face -face conversations with groups of people, primarily in our churches, and number three, the, the media strategy, the, the public displays of welcoming. And, uh, and again, not, how are we going to do that? Who knows? But if you want to be part of this, I'm sure we'll find a way to do it. 20 minutes to figure it out. Come on. That's right. <laughs> Okay, um, so for the detention visitation um, folks that met. Um, yes, um, Helena, and um, I don't think you need it, but they're the saying you need Okay, um, Helena Ryan, and um, we formed uh, three um, main people who are going to be in charge of our detention um, visits um, and other aspects within the detention uh, center as well. And they are John Donahue, who is a pastor at uh, Carnes. Uh, uh, what is your church? Presbyterian, Presbyterian Church. Uh, Paul Pfeiffer, who is already involved with the detention center at Carnes. And uh, Matt uh, Russell, who has come all the way from Houston, and he is also involved. Um, uh, Matt is going to take over the hospitality uh, for lawyers, uh, pro bono volunteer lawyers, um, who need some place to stay when they come in. Um, so the um, four um, points um, that we've put together, our first job is to contact um, American Gateway um, and build up a relationship with them, with our group. Um, Paul has already um, a relationship which will be a great help, it's already begun for us. Um, the second point uh, we're going to do is identify individuals that we know who want to come and visit um, to the detention center. Um, the third point, we're uh, going to have an orientation for those visitors, um, uh, you know, with uh, discussing um, the language and culture. 
um, and make sure that um, they're proficient um, in their visitation. And um, the fourth point is we will implement all this. Um, we, um, within that implementation, we are um, thinking of having a vigil outside the detention center to show um, support for those within. Have I left anything out? Okay, okay. Um, I think uh, um, Pastor uh, John Donahue um, and Paul Pfeiffer, they're going to uh, coordinate this effort together. They are co-chairs. Very good report back. <laughs> now saving the best group for last, the community integration one. Who wants to present? <laughs> yeah, Kitty knows I love public speaking. <laughs> Our group um, is very enthusiastic and we are looking at basically three points to work on. One is gathering the various foster families who have these kids in their homes together for a potluck and um, find out what they need for us to do to support them, to help them out. The second one is to reach out to La Posada Guadalupe where the aged out kids are to reach out to them to see what we can provide them with teaching English, helping them with um, their schoolwork or getting their GED, whatever kind of help, we'll have to reach out to them too to find out what they need for us to do to support. And then following up with a third item is um, La Trinidad um, has quite a few, ev few events throughout the year and they're a very Hispanic cultured church um, and that will be inviting the foster families and the kids to different church events where they will be in a culture of Spanish speakers and get to know people and get to know some of the people from the other churches around so that they may reach out to any of those churches. Can you introduce yourself? I know who I am. <laughs> I'm Susan Troll. I'm with St. Andrew Presbyterian Church. We really didn't get there, but I guess since I have a microphone in my hand, so Susan, I will be glad to. I am a publicly agreeing to that, yes. <laughs> the third bullet. The third bullet was to have um, like a Thanksgiving potluck that the church is already having and inviting the different foster families with the kids and the aged out kids to attend so that they'll get to know some of the church members as well as members from other churches so they'll be inviting you know people from all the different various areas because we don't know where these guys live um, so we'll be trying to pull them in to churches that are close to them i think somebody was asking what church was that answered okay cool um is there another group or other folks from the health or other folks that have anything to add did we cover everyone they were Okay, so I'm going to pass it back to, I believe, Harvey to wrap up. Thank you, Mo. Oh, education. education. No, we, did that. we did that first. That was Eugene Heilman. Okay, that was, I think, the first report. Okay, um, looking at the clock, it's already well after. No, that clock doesn't. Uh, we're actually doing very well on time, so once again, thank all of you for your punctualness. You know, I am chronically uh, non-punctual, so yes, I see a question. Good question, and I was about to say yes. And I don't have an email, so I don't know the way I can get email. So what I need from you is a mailing address so that I can mail it to you with a stamp, okay? And so we'll capture that before you leave. Uh, Alyssa may still, Alyssa right here with her hand up, the young lady in the back, would love to get your mailing address. So, so while that's happening, um, what I was gonna say is what we're gonna do is update the attendance roster 
And again, that's designed to be emailed to the entire group, so hopefully I have your email address. If we don't, and, or if you don't have one and want to have a postage stamped version, get, get with Alyssa and we'll make that happen. Uh, we think communicating what we do is vital to this community effort, and so we think the f most important thing we can do is to report who was here and, and, and advise you know, when the next one is coming up and, and keep everybody posted, and we do that mostly nowadays through email, so that's why that. Uh, the second part is we're going to try and get uh, not a set of minutes necessarily, but notes, and maybe you got those last time, and we talked a lot last time, so we're going to try and keep to the bullet points you just heard, so we're going to ask each of the, and I want to call you committee chair but the points, the shepherds, the points of contact we've just established to be able to get with me so that we can put into a report format a summary of what each group has done. And if your group has agreed to meet next week or tomorrow or later this afternoon, whenever before the September, 20, uh, September 11th time, we would like to hear uh, once again the report out of what that happened so that we can send it out quickly to the group so we don't all have to wait to come to September 11th and then spend the entire time hearing what's old news effectively. So lots of activity, lots of action, um, and thank you once again. I know you were very patient last time to hear a lot of things. Now we are talking together, very important, and, and what will be happening in the next days and weeks is we are going to start moving and actually doing some things. So thank this community for that effort. Um, Eugene Heilman is going to close us in prayer here in just a minute. Uh, are there any questions? At this point, any questions about where we are and what we're doing? I just have a brief follow-up on the yes. meetings coming up. Detention group, look in your email inbox today or tomorrow for a doodle invite, and that's going to put us all together on when we can actually meet again. So, so to repeat, the detention subgroup is going to hear later this afternoon an invitation to when your next gathering will happen. Yeah, yeah. So look for that by email this afternoon. Now, do you have all of your group's email addresses? Okay, so, so they're good to go. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Reverend Martinez shared his uh, the the picture. picture and every, did, they, did you get a copy of it? I got one last time from her, yes. Can it go out in an email so everyone can see that they can use it? If we get this digitally, we can distribute it to everyone digitally. And so if you want to send it to, uh, is, let's see, Flora, actually I think on all of the information, the communicator uh, in my office is Flora, and, and you're welcome to send anything you want uh, to be distributed to the group to her. She has the distribution list and we'll be able to do some forwarding until such time as this group becomes maybe a bit more formal and we actually have someone who could be the secretary and serve in the capacity of information sharing. As we've heard, that's gonna be a very important role for this group as we move forward. So once again, this group right now is just a collective of 50 churches, a number of uh, nonprofit community orgs, and maybe we do wanna get a little more formal as, as time goes by. I see a question. And I see the mic. No, I just wanted to ask the group if you felt okay, like for our organizing committee to be the one that can talk to the press and different things like that. Because like today, Channel 4 was here, WOAI, and I asked the man, you know, some questions. He says, I don't know who to talk to here. I said, well, the people that are up here giving the information. So uh, I said to <laughs> to you that are organized it, I mean, can you be the spokespersons in a sense when we see the media coming? Because we did get a good article in the paper last time but some of the coverage you, you know on the television stations was more about it about 20 people that were uh, uh, down at the Mexican consulate protesting so you know just some way for you to feel empowered that you know that when the press comes that we have someone to say you know what you know is, to, what it is we have to say yes exactly okay so that was a suggestion and not yes The lady in the front, and then the gentleman in the back? No, I was agreeing that you'd be empowered to do that. Oh, okay, I see an agreement here. That, I like quick answers. The gentleman in the back. I just wanted to propose that uh, we accept your, the name of the coalition. Uh, uh, if you can repeat it for us, and if we are agreeing, I kind of like it, so I think good. that's good. All right, so, so do I, are we to the point where we would like to do that? because we need to wrap up, so uh, it'll be a real quick. So what we talked about earlier was that maybe we call this the Community Coalition for Immigrant Children and Families. 
which would be CCICF, if you're into that. Do I just want to see a quick show of hands? Do we like that name? Do we want to call ourselves that? Show of hands? Say it again, por favor. Do we want to use the word undocumented? No. So, so how about a show of hands for those who are opposed to this name? Anybody opposed? I see one. Okay, we do want to be all inclusive, but that's two. We're just, we're, uh, we've heard there was, a, there was an issue here with media and a concern that maybe the group needed to be somehow empowered to speak. And, okay. Oh, I, I, think, I think that was one, one possibility that the... So the, so the question, so is there room for us is the question, and the, and the suggestion was to add that name, and I, see a, and I see a hand over here. And the word refugee? So there's been, so just to repeat, there's been a suggestion to the original suggestion that maybe the word immigrant be, be changed to refugee. And so, so if we have any more discussion, then we're going to have to move this to the next meeting. I'm, I've, okay, so, it, and I'm, I'm, I'm willing to talk about this as long as we need to, but if there was a consensus to do it now, I would say yes, but I, I see maybe we want to talk about this further. So I, so I hear that we would like to talk about this further, and I think that's appropriate. So we'll table that for right now. Um, uh, to get back to your question, the conveners of this, once again, were Presbyterian Disaster Assistance, and I'm that spokesperson, Harvey Howell, and the San Antonio Area Voluntary Organizations Active in Disaster, and the acting president right now is Eugene Heilman, who is also a Methodist and with UMCOR. And so those were the two conveners, but the sort of working staff has been Kelly Allen, whom you've heard from several times, who's been involved in the Presbyterian Immigration Task Force for several years now. She's been working on this for some time, and our very special uh, workaholic, Jonathan, who is still in the room in the very back resting right now. Uh, Jonathan with Raices, who has been sort of the lead organization and has so much information and has been really on the front line, and so that was the last pitch before Gene came up which was to say, we, we talked very briefly about a subgroup down here that might be involved in fundraising and donations. Um, and so, you know, from my viewpoint, if someone in the room is just dying to write a check to something or someplace, Raisi looks like a pretty good place to me. And I'm gonna so recommend to the Presbyterian uh, uh, funding piece of this that, that perhaps that's a great destination for some funding. They've been doing this pro bono for several, several months and as you just heard the forecast is he's going to have a busy 2015. So, uh, you know, if you're looking for a place to send money, that's, that's probably a, a, the best bang for the buck that I can think of right now. Uh, obviously more things will be emerging as time goes by. 